Welcome to the session and with uh, no further ado, I uh, would like to tell you, um, to talk to you about leadership. My vision is that anyone is a leader, any one of us is a leader and my mission is to reveal the leader that is in um, every one of you. One of the questions I want to, to you to ask, to, to answer, it's uh, in the bottom of the poll, um, what are the qualities of your role model leader? If you care to answer that. And that was the first time, think of a leader who is a role model for you. And then answer to the Paul, what are the qualities of that role model leader? Is it authority? Is it great listening? Is it protection, inspired creator, aligned exemplarity or supportive for people? So the answer is supportive for people. Great. Thank you, Sanjal. Can you uh, move to the next slide, please? Now think of the best manager you had in your professional experience. And you are invited to answer the second question of the poll. So the answers are the same. What are the qualities of the best manager you have ever crossed? Either it was your manager or another manager. So what were uh, the qualities you admired? Authority, great listening, protection, inspiring creator, exemplarity, supportive for people. So you have one, four, three, two, one, zero. I hope the poll was... And can you share? Uh, can you share the um, the results? Share the results with you. Anna? Yeah. So the the results are great listening. Um, there's a problem when um, w with the sharing of the presentation. Uh, no, that is fine. Just a second. Okay. Uh, it's there in the discuss tab. Uh, Nareesh has shared uh, this. Okay. Okay. Great. Brilliant. So thank you, Nareesh. So what we see is that the role for, as a role mo model, uh, f f 54 of you answered that it's supportive for people. Uh, 33 percent majority of great listening. And there's something about protection. So the qualities, supporting, listening, great listening, and a little bit of inspired creator. What is what we perceive as the qualities of a great leaders, and it always works like that, is can you share the next slide, please? is great leaders are, le are at the service. Great leaders are always at service of other people, of their teams, of the customers. And that is why, for me, the, really the leaders for tomorrow, we need to shift the pyramid, to um, shift it, in the way that you can, you put the, the, the next slide. So the put the, the greatest leader at the bottom, flip the hierarchy pyramid. And really people, if we don't flip the pyramid, we won't have a customer centric organization. If you just look at a traditional organization, what is happening? Front lines have managers. Managers have directors and they're the C-level and they're the CEO. And in a traditional organization, 
The front line is at the service of the li line managers because they depend on them. And the line managers are the service of the directors and the directors are at the service of the C-level people and the C-level people are the um, at service of the CEO. Where are the customers? The, cost the customers are forgotten at the bottom. Who cares about the customers? In the traditional, my truly belief is that in a traditional organization, it, um, customer and user centric is only wishful thinking. And the, um, the way we can do it is to flip the, the pyramid. So the people that are the most important people are the frontline people. And line managers, Frontline people that serve the customers are in direct contact with customers. The line managers are serving that teams. Directors are th serving the managers. The, uh, the board of directors are serving the other levels of di director and the CEOs. The CEO is at service of anyone. So I'm very, uh, I truly believe that this is the answer for a customer centric um, organization. And there's a problem with this because it's very hard to flip the pyramid. And why is that? What I'm saying, uh, my experience with leadership and um, coaching leaders is that actually when we serve our managers, we, ser we serve our ego. It's our ego who needs some protection and that protection comes for the hierarchy. The goal is to go and really grasp the leadership that we have all in, uh, in ourselves. And for that, what I would um, like to work with you now is work on the ego. To access leadership, we need to get a little bit out of our ego, but it, that's not that simple. You know, when we, we say let go of, our, of the ego, that's not simple. We have a very long story with our ego. And actually, it, it, um, it is back from when we were children. Can you put the other slide? Thank you. The next slide. So we let's go back when we are kids. So I know this is a little bit scary, but still it's uh, the path we need to embrace. I think the the inner self is how we get on the world. Um, we are born um, in the world as children that we uh, are open to unconditional love. We are really, um, we work by being um, linked to each other. Of course, the first thing is our parents. The first ones are, are our parents, but also the other one. So we are, we come into this world open and what we think, well, the, the therapist, um, and it's, this is a model of, by William Schultz, is that what we will we are here for is to share love and have love back. Now this is the plan we have, but the reality doesn't stick to this plan. Can you um, put in the, the next slide? Oh, thank you. The plan is that everything is all around us that is not exactly very open to, uh, for, for um, for love and there's the emotion of fear that is the first one that, that comes in. Just to re relax about fears, fear is good for life because it opens up what is the first, um, uh, first signal of a, of a danger. So uh, fear is for survival is a very, very healthy emotion. Um, can you change the slide? Thank you. So why we, we become fearful? Because we have at the, at the beginning when we, we are children, we have five fundamental wounds that transform in, into fears. And the first one is rejection. Is when, if you remember as a child, sometimes as a baby, 
We, uh, our mother just uh, says uh, when we want to play, I says we don't have time for that. So uh, I would like to have some, do something else right now. This is not a big thing for the adults, but for us as children, this is the first wound that is, um, is stamped on us, is the rejection. So parents are uh, rejecting us. The sec- Can you change the slide, please? The second fun- fun- uh, fundamental one we, we carry in our life is abandon. Imagine that mom, when, when uh, you are a baby, um, you are sleeping and she went to the, um, to the neighbor to grab something. And, uh, she chatted a little bit with her about five minutes. And then he heard a huge cry. Of course, she comes back. And when she comes back, you are crying. Of course, she uh, hugs you and uh, she assures you with all the love. But in our system of beliefs that is very ancient, this second wound is posted on us. It's the wound of abandoned. Can you change? Okay. The third one is betrayal. You know that your mom and my mom, all moms tell to their children, I never ever lie to you. And the child believes that. Of course, mom is there and parents are there to protect them. And if they say that they will never lie, that is true. And one day, that uh, the child realizes that Santa Claus is a lie told by the parents. And in that moment, it's too late. We have in our um, luggage and our legacy the wound of betrayal. People that we trusted most betrayed us. Can you change the slide, please? Thank you. So the fourth one is the humiliation, the wound of humiliation. If you are at school and uh, something happened, uh, someone dropped something on the floor and it was broken and the teacher told you, you have broken this and you are so messy and uh, that's the moment where this another fundamental of humiliation is packed in our legacy so we have four the fifth one thank you you can you can change the slide the fifth one imagine a sister, the older sister, that um, has a cake or a toy. And uh, the younger brother, uh, actually, it's his toy. But the the older sister wants to play that, with that toy and wants to take it. Actually, maybe the, the younger brother even doesn't really like that toy so much. Um, and... There's a little bit of dispute and mom says to the um, older sister, this is his toy. It's not a toy for you. This is the moment where we bring in our legacy of wounds, the wound of injustice. The younger brother even doesn't even want to play with that, but because he is yeah, the younger brother, because it's his toy, mom says that he will um, he he will play with it whenever he wants it, and you can't. So what are they doing? All this fundamental wants. So that's rejection, abandon, 
humiliation and injustice. With all this ones, what we do, we create an adapt, um, system of adaptation. Can you change the slide, please? Yeah. So these are the fives. Rejection, abandon, humiliation, betrayal, injustice. Maybe you can just take a moment uh, here with me and um, and feel what is the one that you um, that you feel the most for you. What, what was the most uh, um, important, the most, the deepest for you? So I don't want you to share it because all this is personal. But just think what. Which one comes up? Ten seconds. Right. I hope you have it. This this comes from a, um, an, um, a model that is called Human Element from William Schultz. This is. Uh, just uh, just want uh, want for you to uh, to know if you want to uh, know more about it. So all these fundamental wounds, what do we do with them? We have them in our legacy baggage, and we create beliefs. We create a system of beliefs. Then we adapt to what we think the world. Um, expects from us so we can be loved by parents and then by other people that we cross including uh, colleagues managers in our professional lives can you change the slide so we create this as adapted system and this adapted system is our ego and what are the behaviors that or, or that we uh, we build in, so we can somehow heal those wounds? The one, the first one is control. The, it's not the first one. One of them is control. When we have the wound of rejection, we want to control the world, so we will never be rejected again. Power, power over people. So we, when we have power. Um, Never, no one ever, ever would humiliate us anymore. Um, recognition. The others recognize us. And because we are linked with the others and we see recognition in the eyes of others, we will never, ever be abandoned. And self-protection or self-justice. I'm just putting in some examples that it's not that linear. It doesn't mean that control is exclusively linked to, with rejection. Um, so I, I, I think it's a helpful way to just um, see how that uh, how that works on creating the adapted system that we carry in life, that, and that is called our ego. So you can see, I hope, that um, letting go the ego, it's not such an easy task. We have, we have the ego from the, our early life, and ego protects us. The way that we deal with fear is with our ego. And we arrive with this adapted system of ego in a new environment. Can you put the other... Um, the other slide, thank you. The next slide. We arrive in the in the professional adapted system, which is also an adapted system with its own ego. And we create another layer, what I call that I call the pro ego, the professional ego, where we have the same behaviors, control, power, validation of other we seek for uh, social status so you see can have this we were here the the true self the inner self we put in uh, we created an ad adapted system which is 
the ego. And then in the professional life, we put it another system, which is the professional ego. So we walk in life and in interaction with our teams, our managers, and um, our uh, pairs, like that, armored. So very much armored. These are not good conditions for leadership. Can you change to the next slide? Thank you. So the, to, to become a true leader at service, as we've seen at the beginning um, of the presentation, you all said that a true leader, a great leader, is that the one that supports other people, listen other people, um, and, um, and help them grow, is inspirational. So to, to go back and create a true leader, what I like to invite you and us all, actually, is to go back to the true me and bravely face our fears. The fears that were created by all what I, are called the fundamental wounds. So can you change the slide, uh, please? So the fear in in the we fear we carry in our professional environment. Can you change the slide? It's it was just to say that we carry our fear that we have from here. We we'll, we carry it in our professional environment and we behave accordingly. Can if you can change the slide? Thank you. So do you remember? Fear is good for life. So this, the, the, the rest of the session, um, I will invite you to work a little bit of, on your fears, on our fears. Um, and I wanted to rem, uh, remind it this as a gentle reminder that fear is good for life. So there's no problem with fears. Can you change the slide? Fear is not the problem. The way we respond in our uh, environment to fears is the true problem. In, and can you change the slide? So that's okay. That was that the rejection I, uh, is a way that we carry it also in, it's just an example, rejection in the, in the pro field. We also can be rejected and feel exactly like the baby that was rejected. There's no difference. There's no difference. The inner self is, uh, is that, uh, baby or child that wanders and, uh, is connected with everyone else. So can you change the slide? Also, thank you. Sana. So remember professional adaptive system, control, validation, power, social status, pro ego. Let's get, let's try to, move them a little bit away. Can you change the slide? Because in the today business world, the main source of fear is ego. Exactly, if you go back to one slide, Sonali, the one with the adapted system, yeah. So everything that in this professional adapted system, what is really the source of fear is our professional ego so go back, go further with on the other side okay now so the idea is to how we can uh, in a very um gentle compassive compassive way work with our own ego as we said we go ego is very strong and he knows or it knows it knows how to uh, manipulate us a lot um the the way to work with our ego is first thing is recognize that we have it this is the first um act of vulnerability the second one is to recognize that it it was helpful it helped us protect uh, protected us to uh, through our life 
So one thing that I can invite you to, to do is just a brief moment, five seconds, thank to your ego. Okay. But now let's try to something else. Try to go to that fundamental wound and fear and work around it. This is um, what I, will, I invite you to do, to do right now and to make, I hope, the thing a little bit easier. So these are the questions. What is the fundamental fear and ego? Um, sorry, a wound or fear you, you have, uh, you think it's most important for you. And what is your ego behavior? If you try to reflect on that for uh, 30 seconds, while I'm giving my own example, my, my fundamental wound and fear, the most important because we all have it, uh, and this is not a question of, of uh, having a, a unhappy childhood. We all had a, unhappy, a very happy childhood and had some little things that happened. So my, uh, my wound is uh, humiliation. And the fear I developed by, uh, because of that is the fear of disappointment. I'm bloody freaking out to disappoint people. Even right now, you know, I'm looking and I said, how many thumbs up do I have? So this is a fear of disappointment. If I don't, if I don't, um, don't have enough, then maybe, uh, I'm not good enough. So I disappoint you. Um, what is, the way that I've worked my ego behavior, working with that on, on uh, uh, dealing, dealing with a fear of disappointment was to um, create for myself a behavior of a um, rescuer. Always be at the service of people, even if there, there, were, uh, the, there was no help solicited. You know, I won't enter into that model, but that was my ego behavior. It's not, it was not my true self that said, Hey, maybe I can give you an advice on this and I can give you an advice of that. And maybe you want this. It was a way for me to make myself seen and to, um, to make myself seen and to make uh, myself um, protected by the disappointment. We'll come back. I've just seen in the discussion fear is um, fear must be replaced by, by love. Yes, absolutely true. Now, we, what I think we need is to have that power to uh, deal with our fears, because fear is um, a fundamental emotion. I'm saying, telling it once again, it keeps us alive. So it has a very high priority in our brain. If there's a danger, fears come up. And it's a lot of work to do on, on that. Can you change the slide? Um, thank you. So access self-leadership means dropping the armor of our ego by facing uh, the fears. And by facing the fears, I think we can reach love to, uh, to answer the, the, um, uh, the um, comment that was, was in the discussion. So um, can you change? So to, f to face our fears, which is scary, just saying it, face your fears is, oh my God, where? Well, not want to, to talk about that. I would invite you to change the perspective of fears. Think that when you're afraid of something, this is good news. What if the fear was a lighthouse that tell us what is really important for us? We never fear something that is not a stake. No, something that has no meaning for us, no importance, 
won't give, won't uh, arise fear. So the first thing is to think for a moment that fear is a lighthouse. It's not something to oppress or overcome or hide, but on the contrary, turn turn and look at it, and and ask what what what, what does it wants to tell us. Can you change the slide, please? Thank you. So I this is very quickly because uh, we can't. Um, there's a tons of material, but this is a way, um, a, a model that I uh, created to shift, um, to shift perspective on fears and um, access the selfless, selfless leadership with Theory U by Otto Sharma. You state the current situation. So I said, what, what's the current situation? What am I afraid about? Look at them. Redirect the attention and say, what is important? behind that letting go of different beliefs you know the ego my meltdown and face the chaos that that is the moment of true uh, uh, true fears when we've let go our behaviors but we feel so vulnerable that we just want to go back and the other status letting come the new idea, saying what is truly important actually for us, crystallizing a new behavior and prototyping the new behavior when we are more vulnerable. By the way, uh, being vulnerable is also an act of generosity. People uh, usually answer to, gener to, um, to vulnerability in a much better way than uh, in front of armors. Okay, so a little exercise for five, the next five minutes. Can you change the slide, please? The little e exercise to stay with your fears and transform your fears. Remember a situation that you'd like to change. Probably a professional situation might, might help. And um, try to, to see what is, to think of what is stuck there. I will leave you for one minute or maybe less to write that down. Okay. Okay. Can you change the slide? Now that I hope you have it, you might maybe in the discussion, uh, you can put uh, it. It's fine for me. I have it. That just a way to, uh, to, to track, uh, that, uh, that there's advancement. And, um, now I would like, I invite you to do this exercise. Answer these Question, in that situation that you feel stuck, how do you feel? What would you like to change? And if you were to change that, what are your current beliefs? You know, the beliefs are our armored ego. How does that belief relate with your fears? Then just let's have one minute of presence, everyone that is. We are all here. And we know that we are all here. Stop thinking. We are just together. So just breathe. Let us feel that we breathe all together, regardless of 
what time is with you all around the world, late morning, evening, early. We breathe all together for one minute. Right. Now, I hope you have the answers to the first two questions. And um, I invite you to, to answer the fourth question. What is your need behind that fear? What is truly important? No, we have, we've made the journey belief, fear. And behind the fear, what is truly important? And if you find that, try to write down how you can otherwise serve that need or, or that thing, that matter that is important for you, that matter that matters, and how you can be better realigned with what is important for you. Okay. If you can put in in the discussions uh, just some comments saying I um, I'm done or or not. Because if not, I hope you there's a, this this question is uh, worth more than uh, three minutes to go through. But you can um, take them and uh, try to reflect more on them uh, on them by your own. What I appreciate, what I said, that we are here together. And while each one of you reflects on this, the, the, their, your own answer to these questions, there is a holding space where, when we are all together. Um, thank you. Can you... Change to the next slide, which is the last slide. I hope you've got some good answers. And uh, with this exercise, know that you can empower yourself. When we talk about empower empowering, no one can empower someone else. You can all, all, uh, only empower yourself. And you have that choice to be a leader, to be a leader from yourself and also what you can do is to support other people as leaders to empower themselves also. Thank you so much. I think we have uh, uh, three minutes or so for uh, questions. If you want, uh, and you can uh, join me, talk to me. Um, um, on, on Twitter, my mail, um, there's a, a ton of other material on uh, on leadership I'm passionate and I'm working on. I don't know if they're okay. I'm going to the discussion. How do you distinguish between ego and self-esteem? A very good question. So um, the self-esteem is the way that you appreciate yourself. And when the people that are self, when we are have a, a self esteem, we are kind to ourselves. We know that we, what we bring is value. Ego is a, the, um, is an armor that it's always wants to do some avoidance, uh, behaviors that will protect us 
from being confronted to a world that uh, that is um, hostile or threatening. So, for example, um, I, if my self-esteem is I'm very passionate about uh, this material and what I've brought to you, as I said. So I really, I really bring it as a gift. Uh, and so this is the way my self-esteem, the ego in me would ask you the question, did you like it? Can you tell me all, what did you like about it? It's a way to, to have a, a, a recognition. For example, by the way, in, in re retrospectives or, or feedbacks, actually, I, uh, today I ask more the, uh, the question, what was helpful for you? In what, what, I, what did you learn? It's not about how, give me a feedback of, of, of what, uh, how well uh, did I do? I, did I perform? So, or, so what did you learn? What, what did you, um, wanted to learn more and you didn't have enough, you know, so to, but never really a feedback about, about how well I, uh, I, I perform. This is my example. I hope it helped as a, as an answer. So uh, there's another question. How do we help people understand that sometimes our reaction of behavior is driven by self-respect, dignity, and not because of ego? Oh, this is, this is a passionate topic. This reminds me of, a um, uh, a protocol that it's called nonviolent communication, by the way. Um, when you, um, if you want the people to understand that you act by respect, the idea is that you put boundaries. And it's to be very clear about the, uh, those boundaries. What is okay for you and what is not okay for you. And um, if you have a specific situ uh, situation, you can say that in this situation, this is what happened, you know, the facts. And then say that this facts made you feel in a way that was not okay for you. So this is also the difference between boundaries and ego. If you are um, explicit about what uh, your boundaries are, this is not ego. The ego is really the, the biased behavior we have to protect ourselves in a... Uh, while in the same time we are fully adapted to the system that is uh, that we interact with, the self-esteem and and the um, uh, the dignity is we are who we are in the system. We don't really adapt to be to please the system. Ego always please the system. So, so, so to satisfy our we, we look for external comments and probably external good and satisfying comments. Yes, the, the, this is only an, an example. It was an easy example for me. And because we are in a conference, it was also a way for me to show up in vulnerability. But th there are other examples, you know, uh, the people that don't, um, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to be judgmental, but it, it's another example. Uh, if I uh, don't, uh, say something, something that I think it's wrong in a meeting. Uh, and I, uh, then I say to myself, well, I don't want to show up too much because I, I'm a, I'm a humble, modest, uh, person. This is the ego that tells you to, uh, that you are modest and you want to show up. This is a way to be protected, to protect yourself. So, uh, Wana, sorry to interrupt you, but yes, we are running short on time. So, guys, you can take your questions uh, to the VIP section. Okay? Of course. Okay, so thank you so much, Wana, for this session and yeah. sharing your experience with us today. So, uh, I would request everyone to rate the session by clicking on the poll section, which is there on your right. And one of you will be able for uh, next one hour in the VIP section. So you all can join over there and continue with the questions over there. 
Of course, of course, I will be more than happy to ask the questions I didn't ask. Uh, I wouldn't have time to ask. Thank you for being here for me, uh, with me. Uh, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. Bye.